Hello, uh, and welcome to week six of CSCI 1061. We are going to be talking about command line arguments in Makefile today. Uh, this should be fairly short, uh, the lecture as well is not going to be particularly long, but I felt this is an important topic to include just because, first of all, uh, we should know how to include command line arguments. It's not a very complicated thing, so we can cover it fairly quickly. Uh, and Makefile is something that I think is really important to know for anybody who's building any sort of program that's going to be more than just one file. So in combination of what we learned from last week, we can, uh, we can use that with make files to make compiling things a little bit easier for us. So uh, starting with the first exercise, with help from our operation class from the previous lecture, uh, modify the main program so it performs operations on two integers from the command line. So at this point, you know, we've been getting stuff from the user, having them type stuff in. Let me, uh, let me turn on my light here, by the way, make things a little nicer. Um, and uh, it turns out, you know, you can also just pipe stuff in directly from, uh, from the terminal. So we're going to do that. Uh, okay, we're going to need the operation class from last lecture, and we're going to need the main too. So let's go back and grab our main and our operation stuff. I hope I can control C, control V. Oh, I tried. <laughs> uh, you, copy. Here, paste. Great. Okay. So, uh, we are going to do something different. Let's get rid of this because we are not doing those exercises now. Oh, hold up. Uh, yeah, that's the right one, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here we are adding and dividing just like numbers that come kind of from nowhere, right? Um, but what if we want it to be the case that when we compile this, the numbers that we type in as we're compiling uh, get put directly into here. And we can actually do that, and it's not too hard. So, uh, first things first, uh, up to this point, we've been doing int main uh, with no parameters. Turns out there are parameters that are uh, associated with main. First one is called argc. This is a count of the arguments that are given to your program. So if I decide I want to put in you know, 10 numbers, then the value of argc might be 10, because that's how many I put in. Uh, this number is dependent on exactly how many uh, digits are typed or values are typed in uh, after the execution command. So when you dot slash, you know, a dot out or example or whatever, um, right after you've typed the name of the file, you then can start putting in words, putting in numbers, whatever you feel like. Uh, and however many there are is argc. The actual things themselves are... Uh, it's character star argv with brackets, but you also can do uh, double star, which is a array of strings, array of character pointers, character arrays, which are strings. So in other words, argv, um, each element of this is one of the things that we've typed in. So instead of using o.max int or 50 or whatever these numbers are, we're going to actually just let us, um, we're going to make it so that we're going to use two numbers that are put in here. So let's do um, argv0, argv1, and we'll do the same thing for all of them. argv1, argv0, argv1, argv0, argv1. Hooray, okay, that's it. Uh, now, I should be able to compile this. It shouldn't uh, cause me any issues, I sure hope. Okay, uh, so I need to compile everything, g++, main, and operation. Okay, what did I do? Um, <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> they are strings. You gotta convert them. You know, it says here uh, invalid conversion from chair star to int. So I need to get a uh, number out of these things. Uh, I believe STOI will do it, but I could be wrong. We're gonna we're gonna give it a shot. Let's comment out these other ones, and then I can see if STOI actually works. Um, STOI, string to int, is what that stands for. Uh, and let's see if this actually works before I try the other ones all as well. Uh, and let's you know, say I give it a 10 and a 5. Uh, oh no, what did I do? Uh, invalid argument, STOI. Oh, that's not good. Um, okay. Perhaps it is the case that STOI is not going to work because... Um, the first element is not converting properly. So how about we try this? String uh, number one is argv0. 
Let's try adding the second element twice. I'm kind of curious to see what will happen. Uh, and instead of argv1, it'll be num1. I'm just going to kind of experiment to see if I can figure out exactly why this isn't doing what I want it to do. Uh, okay, sure. Let's find out. Okay, try it again. Compile. Go. All right. Run. Ha. Ah. So I think I may have made a little mistake here, which is that you'll notice that it added the 10 twice. And I think what the what the happened here is I'm pretty sure that 10 is at index 1 and 5 is at index 2 and at index 0. Actually, you know, let's find out what the heck is at index 0. C out index 0. Yeah, you know, experiment a little bit, right? Okay, what the heck is that? Compile. Uh, go. Ah, huh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, index zero, the first parameter is the name of the file, <laughs> a.out, the executable that you're running. Uh, so we can, now that we've learned this, uh, index zero is the uh, is a.out, .out. index one is 10, index two is gonna be five. I can go back now, uh, so I don't need this. It does look like I need to convert our arguments to strings, so number two is gonna be our v2, and here now I can do num1, num2. And I can put this into my parameters over here and over here and over here. Uh, these all kind of do the same thing, so we can actually just get rid of two of these. Uh, we can do our other operations too, right? Why not? We have multiply and subtract, so sure, let's do that. Subtract. So this will be subtract and multiply. Multiply. Let's give it a shot. Compile. Go. Add them. Fifteen. Divide to get two. Subtract to get five. Multiply to get fifty. Yeah, sounds good. So there we go. Um, not too much to this. Um, so really, all we've covered is you know you need you don't have to have argc, but it is assumed to be the default property here. Uh, I believe if I were to output argc, um, it should give us three. But I guess we can find out. argc is, yeah, three. So one being the name of our executable, one being the number 10, because we gave it a 10, one gave it a number five, because we gave it a five. And you can give whatever numbers you want, and as many as you like. All right, uh, so that's it for our first exercise. Now, let's go into our second one. So here is where we start getting into a make files. So a make file um, uses make, uh, which turns out is a thing that's actually built into our little terminal over here. Uh, I think if I type make, it'll, it'll try to run it. Can I do a help make? No, there's no help or anything like that. Um, and I think we'll info make. No, okay, that's all right. Um, so there is some notes uh, that are posted in the um, in the slides here if you want to read up on make. But essentially, what it does is it is a uh, way that you can write instructions for how to compile things. So I don't have to go uh, you know arrow arrow up arrow arrow up all over all the time. I can just type the word make and it'll do what I want it to do. So for this exercise, create a make file that will compile and run your program. Don't forget to include the command line input. So we're gonna make a make file. Just call it make file. Uh, it's important you call it make file. No file extension, just make file. I think a capital M is okay too, but I usually undercase it. Uh, and what we got in here is this is going to be formatted such that um, it's gonna have our targets and our dependencies and our recipes. So. Um, for this one, we are, uh, I suppose we're gonna keep it really simple. You can obviously go through all the steps if you want to, but just to make this work, um, we're gonna do all, and for this, um, we are going to do G++, um, what is it, main.cpp operation.cpp uh, out to, um, uh, what, what should we call it? Uh, an example. Sure. And we'll also do run, which will be dot, uh, 
button slash example, and, you know, 10 and 5 for fun. Okay. So now if I type make, uh, well, did, I, uh, did I typo this? Missing separator, uh, probably. Uh, let's let's double check my formatting. I'm sure I messed up the formatting somewhere here. We'll just go grab an example. Uh... Oh right, I forgot the uh, <laughs> I forgot the dependencies. That would help. Okay, so I need main.cpp um, operation dot cpp operation dot h and uh, example. I mean, invalid save error. What? That's weird. Why can't I save this? Invalid response 502. Is my internet down? Hope not. What if I try to make another file? You know what? I think it might be down. I may have to come back to this in a bit. If uh, if the server is down, because if the server is down, I can't really do too much of anything. Um, hmm. Okay, so that's yeah, that's the old stuff. It's going all good. All right, all right. Uh, I will come back. And uh, hopefully, when I return the internet, uh, or at least maybe it's the maybe it's the server. I, I don't know. I guess I can try refreshing. Let's give it a refresh, and maybe that'll do it. Uh, and if not, then I know I have to come back later. Uh, yep. All right, it's down. <laughs> Sorry about that. We will uh, we will return. All right. See you uh, in the next clip, I suppose. Okay. It looks like we are back. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happened. I went and talked to IT and they have no idea why it works now, <laughs> but supposedly it works now so we can fix what we were fixing before. So I'm gonna make sure this works first and then I can go back and explain why I wrote the things that I did. Uh, it's main.cpp operation.cpp operation.h and this should be example. Let's try this again. Uh, I guess I shouldn't call this all, I should just call this main. Okay, second attempt. Make. Ugh, okay, what did I do now? Missing separator. Let's see what the, okay, what is the, yeah, that looks right. It's just like this, right? Okay, maybe we'll skip the run for now. Let's just see if this will go. Thank you. Make. Really? Make. It should just be make. Missing separator. Uh, all right, we're gonna we're gonna resort to googling this. Uh, missing separator. What did I do wrong? Make sure not to accidentally grab the tilde indicating line of file. I'm sure it might be something else. All right, Stack Overflow. What did I do wrong? Uh, tab is required to start each recipe. Oh, oh, do I have to tab in the first line too? No way, I did that. Try using a tab. Okay, we'll try using a tab. Maybe that's the problem. Do I have spaces here? Oh, I do have spaces. Is that the problem? Make. No, that's not it. Uh, what did I do? Maybe I have it reversed. Maybe it should be spaces. All right, let's try it. One, two, three, four. Ugh, formatting. No, that's not it. Very frustrating. Like it should work. I just don't know why it's not. Tab is placed by spaces. Oh, 
I wonder if that's what it is. I wonder if it's the case that the um, the text editor for Jupiter puts in spaces instead of tabs. Let's see. So if I go and nano my make file, and I use a tab, oh my goodness, that's so silly. <laughs> okay. This this is a this is like a, a to do I think for uh, for next time I cover this course is it's kind of wild so that means if I go here I need to reopen this yeah look at that so there's a tab here and this tab is different from when I hit the tab key I wonder if there's a setting for this um, advanced settings editor for text editor. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it can't be done. Okay, well that's kind of annoying because it makes make files a lot more inconvenient. But we know how to do it now. That's the important part. So let's talk about what I just did. Um, this is a make file. It's composed of two lines. As our uh, sorry, this is a make file with a single make command. Um, and whatever is at the top of your make file is always the first thing that gets run when you type in the word make. In this case, it is um, me, which is basically. Um, uh, me telling it I want to compile main with the operation and save it as example. Now, uh, this is the recipe. This is the instructions I want the computer to do, and it comes after a tab. Um, main is the name of the command, so I also could do um, make main, and we'll do the same thing. Um, and here are the, uh, the dependencies, meaning that if I decided to change uh, one of these files, then I would need to run this again. Now, um, let's see, maybe we will actually speed this up a little bit. So right now, um, when I do this, I'm telling the computer actually to do a few things. I'm first saying compile the CPP files, then take the output from that and link it to my example executable. That's a lot of steps to do all at once. And it's handy to do it in one line because it's shorthand. But when you're using a make file, you can split this up. So we're going to split this up into two things. We're going to have, um, we're going to have one called compile. And this is going to need the stuff we have here. And the difference is that instead of this, we're going to do dash C. And so what this is going to do now is it's going to compile these, but it's not going to link them to the executable right away. It's going to make main.o and operation.o. And we can see this happen over here, make compile. And now when I look at the files that are here, I got my main.o and my operation.o. Why is this important? Well, because linking my uh, output files together is much, much faster then compiling again every time I need that. So now, when I, um, when I am here, instead I can use main.o, operation.o, uh, and I can compile these into my uh, example. And you notice that was a lot faster. Uh, now, of course, we'll make sure this works. Uh, example 10 and 5. Uh, also, I should probably put my... Um, uh, I should also put some instructions for how to run this, right? So let's do uh, make... Or we'll do run, and this will require our example. And if we have our example, then we can go uh, example 10 and 5. Now, uh, it's kind of annoying that my font is uh, going right off the screen. Let's, uh, let's do this, that's better. Make run. And now, that was real fast, right? I didn't have to compile everything. Um, so you can see that each step is, is a little different. Make compile is the one that actually creates my O files. Make, um, what is it? Make main uh, takes those and creates example. And then make run um, makes my takes my example and runs that. Now here is a, here is sort of the the trick here is you know what if my example didn't exist? So let's try removing some stuff and 
seeing what happens. So we'll remove main.o, operation.o, and a.out an example. Okay, now what if, have, what if I do make run? So here is, um, you know, here is where uh, I have a, a little bit of an issue. It's, okay, there's no rule to make example, which I need for run. Well, that's a problem, right? I wanna be able to run things, but in order to run things, I need my example. So this is where the dependency stuff uh, is relevant. Now, I think there might be a, a thing in here about, yeah, so rather than using our files as our dependencies, what we actually can do is we can use the other commands as dependencies. So if I go back to my make file, instead of having example, I can say actually for this, I just need make. And this is gonna generate my O files. Uh, so instead of, um, instead of putting these here, I can actually just put compile. And we'll put this at the top. Now let's see what happens when I do make, when I just do make. So make, when I first ran it, goes to try to run. When it tries to run, it says, oh, you need to do the make command first, or the main command. My main command says, well, you have to compile first. And so when I need to compile, I can say, all right, uh, here are the files that are there compile them to make my O files. And then I, now that compile is done, I can link those to make my example. And now that example is done, I can run my code. And now if I do make again, it does you know, the same thing. Now, um, this is a lot faster than typing up every time I want to go through things, uh, which ends up making things a lot, lot better for uh, any time that you're working with a lot of different files. It is super inconvenient to have to retype these names over and over, which is the reason we would use a make file for that. Okay, I um, think we will, uh, I guess, do we have time to do this one? Yeah, sure. Uh, continuing from the previous exercise and from the person class, create a program that will do each mathematical operation on the ages of two persons and build it with a make file. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll put everything we've done so far into its own little mini folder. Example is one to two, I'll put all that in there. And then we'll make a new one that's example three. Uh, and example three will actually just have all the same stuff from here, but we're gonna change some things. Okay, so right now our make file just builds it all. But what we wanna do, and let's, uh, let's make sure that we have our instructions here with us. Uh, we're also going to need to grab a person class, so we'll have to make sure to get that. Um, if you want to put comments in your make file, you can do so with just number signs. Uh, I guess I just need one for the moment. There we go. Um, create a program that will perform each mathematical operation on the age of two persons, write a make file to build this program. So here's our make file that's going to build the program. Now we need to grab the person class from week four. All right. Uh, where is our person class? Here it is. Um, now, this is a whole thing with a main file. We don't need all of this, right? We only really need the class itself. So I'm gonna copy the code here. Uh, and in week six, at example three, I'm gonna make a new file called person.cpp. I'm gonna remove the main function because I don't need it. And remove this comment because that's not necessary. And I'm gonna take this and make a header file as well. Turns out making a header file should be pretty quick. So new file, person.h. Uh, the only difference is going to be that it is going to have no code. all these with semicolons. And now if I've done this correctly, assuming I haven't broken something, what I should be able to do is I should be able to, in my make file here, add on um, person.cpp to my list of stuff to compile. Person.cpp. And the person. 
person.h. Uh, and to make sure I'm actually using this, I will add it to my main code over here. So include person.h with quotations. Okay. Uh, is this the right one? Yes, this is the old one. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, that's the right one. That's the right one. That's the wrong one. Okay, making sure I'm not editing the wrong files because that would be very scary. Okay, uh, I'm gonna compile these programs. I'm also going to link person.o and this should all go the same. Nothing should change. Oop, no target specified and no make file found. Well, that's not good, but there's a make file right there. Ah, I'm in the wrong directory. Example three. Make. Okay, everything seems fine so far. Now I haven't done anything with the person yet, so that's kind of I not ideal. Uh, what do I need to do with the person? Uh, uh, where did I put my uh, instructions? Did I put my instructions in the wrong make file? I bet I did. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> Take that out of here. Put it in the correct make file. Okay, um, do each mathematical operation on the ages of two persons. Okay, so I need to um, get two persons, put their ages in, and then use a make file to build that. So I'm not gonna need my command line things here. Uh, and I can just, I think, do this. This should be fine. Um, and with my person, uh, whoop. So their age is, it looks like public, right? So that should actually be very quick and easy to do. Uh, oh no, it's private. So uh, that makes things a little tricky, right? I don't think I have some way to figure out their, um, their ages. Do I? Hmm. No, so I'm gonna need, a, uh, I need something for that. Um, I think what we'll do is we will write a getter. Int uh, get age return age. And I need to make sure this is in my CPP and my header as well. Make, make sure I didn't break something. Oh, what did I mess up? Terminate called after throwing an instance of logic error. What construct? What on earth happened there? Very strange. Um, I don't think this arrow age should make a difference. Oh wait, my main file is still expecting uh, arguments, so we gotta fix that. Okay. Um, so we're not gonna use our arguments now, we're just gonna make two persons. So we got person p1 and we got person p2. Um, we have constructors for this, I think, right? Because we need to be able to set their age somehow. Yes, okay. Well, it looks like uh, the only way their age can be is 32. Um, perhaps that's something to fix. But for now, we're just going to make two people. Their ages are 32. Uh, and then we're going to do the math on their ages. Uh, and so for that, we can just go ahead with... Uh, well, we don't need STOI anymore because we can just do p1.getAge. And we can do p2.getAge. And we'll try doing that for all of our methods here. And here I should just be able to type make. Uh, okay, what's the what's the problem now? Oh, did I change the wrong one again? Of course I changed the wrong one again. <laughs> all right, put it back. That's how it was. 
Now I need to make sure I'm editing the right main.cpp, which is this one. Okay. Make. Now what? Oh no, I changed the wrong one again. <laughs> I am clearly not learning my lesson. Okay, that's right. Get out of here. Go here. Change this one. Make. All right, now what do we do? Um, declaration of person sent me an outside of classes, not definition. So this messed up when I tried to do what? Um, oh, I think I forgot to call the constructor. I think I have to do this. This might be my mistake. Uh, it was complaining because it didn't seem to be able to build the person properly, and I think it's because I need to do this. And this should therefore be arrow get age for all of these. Let's try that again. Clear. Now, why are you upset? Uh, oh, it's the same thing. Declaration of person outside of class is not definition. I wonder what that means. Um, Uh, could be the case that he's going to be pointers. Let's see if that does anything. Uh, well, let's change some stuff, but we still have a problem of missing things. Hmm. Oh, there might be a typo in here. So this this doesn't look quite right. Because mm -hmm. this should not mm -hmm. be there. And this should just end with this. So I wonder if that error was causing issues here. Maybe. Can try it again. Clear, make. No other errors. Might be the case that these are not supposed to be here because they've all been defined already. Let's uh, let's try and see if that's the case. Ah, <laughs> almost there. Um, unrefined reference to person not get age. Did I call it something else? No, it says get age. And over here we have get age. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. What could this be? Perhaps it needs to be outside of the class. Let's try. Rather than having this here, what if I declare it here? Okay, well now it's upset because it's not here. So what if I change that? And I say, all right. Age. And this is from the person class. Clear. Make. Still not finding it. Hmm. What could the error be? <sighs> Well, the import person dot age says that there's a person get age. Maybe this should be here too. I don't think this is the problem though. Yeah, so it doesn't like that. That's not good. Oh, that 
seem to have worked. So what did I do? I well, I didn't put any of these here because they've already been declared as part of the class. Over here, it looks like I needed to actually put the person's get age method outside of here and not define the method in here. So let's see if that's if that's exactly what happened. So I'll comment that out and try doing you know, return this age. And I think that's exactly the, the occurrence. So this should fail. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's just a typo. Yeah, okay. So the problem is, and this is a shorthand that I've, I've gotten used to, and I can see now why you wouldn't want to do it maybe. The get age function here that is public I want to be accessible outside of this file. In order for that to be the case, I must define it outside of the class here. Otherwise, when my main file tries to access get age, it cannot find it, and that is a problem. So I need to say what it does over here. It's still listed inside the class here and inside person.cpp, but what it does is set over here, and now that actually will work. Clear it again and make and everything is functioning fine. I have a 32 year old person. When I add their ages together, I get 64. 32 over 32 is one. Subtract them, I get zero. And 32 squared is 1024. Hmm. All right, there are many other things you can do with make files. I have not explored in these examples. Um, you may want to look at the notes just to see what sorts of things you can do, including variables. I have no variables here, everything is static. Uh, so if you wanna be able to put in variables, be able to you know, use different compilers, that kind of thing. Um, try it out, explore it a little bit. Uh, and if you want a little bit of extra homework, see if you can do a, um, make some other changes to this to maybe make it easier to use. Kind of up to you to see if you can figure that out. Uh, but I think that's all for the video today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in class. Goodbye.